Oh, here we go. Finally, we're getting to Bobby Eaton. We haven't talked about Bobby Eaton yet. So. There was, uh, just before you um, read the email, they always say these things happen in threes. Actually, uh, we lost Bobby Eaton, you lost Jody Hamilton, and there's one more. It was um, Burt Prentice, too. Yeah. Those guys all passed away. Next is from Jared Smith. The subject is Bobby Eaton and the nicest guys in wrestling. Hey, guys. Hope all is well. First off, I want to say K-Dog. It's great to see you on AEW, and I can't wait to finally see a payoff to the FTR versus Santana and Ortiz feud. My question is, with the recent passing of Bobby Eaton, I was wondering, did you guys have any interactions with him in WCW? Also, he had a reputation for being one of the nicest guys backstage. Aside from him, who were some of the nicest people you guys ever encountered backstage? Thanks, as always. Um, but Bobby- I'll tell you a Bobby Eaton story real quick because it's a very good one, too. So when I first came into uh, – the, at that time, they were still NWA. It was maybe eight, 1989, and I was going for the Pat O'Connor Memorial Tournament yeah. that they had in St. Star- Louis Star- for Star-Kade. the Steiner Brothers. Huh? It's like Starcade 90 or Starcade 89 or something, yeah. Somewhere like that, yeah. And uh, that's when I first met Paul Lee and Jim Ross. But anyway, so it had like the Russian team that had just come from New Japan. It had the Steiners. That's where I met Norman Smiley for the first time. Yeah. That's where I met Ted Petty Ted for the Petty. first time. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, uh, Colonel- I was doing <laughs> I was gonna say, they, called him, they called him Colonel de Klerk, and he was on the South African team. <laughs> yes, Colonel de Klerk, right. Yeah. And so... I was uh, I was on this house show loop because um, they wanted to put me and Brian Pillman together. And I remember that it was my first day there and they put me against Bobby Eaton. And they were like, yeah, Bobby, you know, we, won't put, we want you to put this guy over. He'd never heard of me. He didn't know who the f- I was. And he was Bobby Eaton. OK. And he never made a face. Never was a. D- you know, I never heard that he went to complain. And I respected that so much. All he did was go out there and try to make me as good as he could. So fast forward to like maybe 2000, we're doing a house show loop and we're somewhere, I believe, in Alabama. And I remember that double A, Arn Anderson was the, uh, was the agent. And he goes, hey, man, we're in, uh, you know, uh, uh, what's this guy, Bob Eaton's hometown. I don't know if you remember him. I go, of course I f- remember him. Mm. He goes, you know, I'd like to really do him the favor and put him over in front of his hometown crowd. I go, whatever he wants to do, my brother. Mm. And bro makes me almost want to cry, but it was cool, you know? Yeah. And, and I, uh, we, we speak about what's on the K100 Facebook page. Disco actually had tweeted a match with Bobby, and I, I took it and put it on the Facebook page, too. So There's a few other matches me and Bobby. Yeah. And I always loved wrestling Bobby Eaton because I was always a fan of the way he punched, right? Oh, yeah. Excellent. And so all of our matches, if you go watch, if you want to, bro, if you want to go see some good work of guys that throw punches and, and one guy selling them really well... Go watch these matches because I've selling. All I did was just sell his punches the whole time. The, the whole match was centered around Bobby's right hand. That was his offense. You boom, 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 and then a duck. Plus, the plus yeah. you, plus you, like me, you probably were like a, f- a fan of his and marking out while I'm working with huge Bobby fan. Eaton because the guy oh, was Midnight, great. Midnight Express was huge, and this was with Bobby Eaton. Bobby Eaton was kind of like an introvert. He was kind of socially yeah. awkward and everything, but very socially awkward. The guy's talent level was like off the chain. You know what I'm saying? It's like he was he, but, but the per- perfect encapsulation. Bobby Eaton before Bret Hart was was the, the epitome of the excellence of execution. Like everything he did was just like just right. he, he was just like you look at the guy and like what, what like if you looked at like Luger, Sting, Flair, Bobby Eaton, um, Orndorff and stuff. You lined all these guys up and say, "Wow, which of these guys he thinks most talented?" You're, like nobody would look and say, "Well, Bobby Eaton." You know, yeah. you, but you look at the guy, you're not gonna, that, that guy's like. Then you watch his, him work. And he was like the excellence of execution. He was great at everything, you yeah. know, just per- perfect timing and stuff. And awesome. I watched, uh, uh, if you want to go back and watch something really great, watch Bobby versus Arn Anderson for the TV title. And, and Bobby goes over, but it's, it's phenomenal. And the crowd reaction, too. And if you remember, Bobby was actually the first guy that went and put Steve Austin over, too. Austin came in as like a one-year rookie and beat Eaton for the TV title. But Bobby made him look, you know, spectacular. So 